So Bontech has released their new CHT nozzles and tonight we are putting them to the test. Stay tuned. So if you're like me, you're getting all excited over um, new, new printing technology and new stuff coming to the market. I'm, I'm a bit like that. <laughs> I'm a bit weird also. So <laughs> anyway, so this new ID, well, we can't say it's a new ID because 3D Solex, a company um, making nozzles, uh, they make tree stuff as well, but they have these nozzles um, with, with filament splitter and they had that ID for quite a while now. And, and they also had um, one version of their nozzles with a three-way splitter. Unfortunately, it was just available for uh, Ultimaker's printers, but they have the, the, the one that are uh, uh, compatible with, with V6 and RepRap and all kinds of other compatibility, but they were only two-way filament splitter. Now, Bontech is coming with that three-way splitter, and, and the way they machine them is, is they have a more sharp, edge or or sharp splitter on on the end of the of the nozzle to help splitting the filament and they claim that these uh this new nozzle will 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 crank your flow up to 30 percent more so we're, we're we're just gonna put them to the test and find out if that claim is true so to perform the test tonight what i'm going to do um or or what i've done is that i have removed my Nova hot end from my, my Veron printer because I'm going to use the Veron to perform this test and I have installed one of my uh, V6 hot end and the reason behind that is because uh, well simply the Nova has proprietary nozzles and these are rep wrap style uh, V6 kind of nozzles so we need something to compare with and the only other hot end that I have here with me is my Magnum Plus on, on the VZBot. <laughs> and I'm not gonna use the Magnum Plus to do that test simply because um, to, to be able to, to see if we have an improvement in flow, we basically gonna need to bring that hot end to its limit. Uh, we're gonna have to see where it fails. And, and that Magnum Plus to fail it, to bring it to its max flow, you really need to push a lot of plastic. So that's gonna make things a bit too, um, difficult to judge and to compare. So back to our good old V6. Um, we're going to run the test using a 0 0.6 Bontech, call them uh, the 60. So 0 0.6 nozzle. They are made of brass and they are um, zinc plated. And uh, we're going to compare that with another brass 0 0.6, brand new. And that's going to be a fair comparison because they're they're both brass. And um, for the test, it's going to be a really simple one. Um, I don't know if you've seen a video on on CNC Kitchen about his flow test. What he's doing, he's extruding in the air a certain amount of plastic. Then he weights um, the total uh, filament that has been extruded. Now um, my weight, my scale here is not probably not precise enough to do this. So I came with a new idea on, on how to do this. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to extract a certain amount of plastic and I'm going to slowly increase um, the, the, the speed, the extrusion speed from probably 10 millimeters, uh, cubic millimeters, all the way up to failure. So we're going to start around 10 because I know um, these V6 can probably do between 10 to 15. So that's going to be where I'm going to start the test around 10. And on the Veron, I just want to show you the extruder on this one. Um, I don't know if you've seen these kind of extruder before, but uh, they're called uh, Bulldog extruders and they are really powerful. Um, the only downside of these is that uh, they only have one gear on one side. The other side is a bearing. Um, plus, they are uh, running with a planetary gear, which means this thing is super strong it is not going to skip. Um, the, the stepper will not skip any step. However, what's gonna happen is that this gear here is gonna start uh, grinding on the filament and it's gonna make some noise and we're gonna be able to hear that in the video. And that's gonna be uh, my, my uh, threshold to see if we're hitting the, the max flow of the hot end. So 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure, um, let's say, I'm, I'm not too sure if I want to use 400 millimeters or 500. I don't want to waste too much plastic. I mean, I don't care about plastic. So let's do 500 millimeters of extrusion. And I'm going to measure and put a mark on the filament at 500 mark. And we're going to compare that between every run and see where, how close we get to that uh, 500 mark. If we're getting far away, it means we have skipped some, not steps, but that um, extruder has started grinding on the filament and it's not pushing plastic anymore. Uh, so that's going to be um, my, my measuring point. Sound plus the measurement of the length that was uh, actually extruded. So I'm going to place a camera right here. I don't know the angle yet. And I'm going to place another camera on there so you can see um, the filament coming out of the um, of the uh, nozzle. So we have installed the V6 with a 0 0.6. I don't know if you can see that or not. So um, we're, we're ready to start the test. And for that, I'm going to run some simple G codes. And uh, that's going to be that's going to be really the test. I'm going to put all the data um, in a graphic so we can compare results and see if that CHT nozzle is improving flow on this V6. So let's do it. So I started by cutting myself a 400 millimeter wire to use as a measuring template for all the test runs I've made. I then made sure my extruder was precisely calibrated for 400 millimeter extrusion. For some reason, I've always calibrated my extruders um, with 100 millimeter extrusion, but on this test, I've realized that I was a bit off when asking 400 millimeter. I was like four millimeter short of 400 millimeters, so about 1% off. So in the future, I will always calibrate my extruders now with a longer range just to make sure I'm precisely calibrated. Then I was ready to do the testing. Setting the hot end at 215 Celsius, I then started slow at around 10 cubic millimeters per second, which translates to 250 millimeters per minute extrusion speed and cranking speed between each run by 25 millimeters per minute, which is about one cubic millimeter increments between each run. Then after each extrusion test, I measured the length of the filament I was not extruded to reach that 400 millimeter mark, if any. And I did crank up the speed of extrusion until filament started skipping on the gear. And this is where I stopped the test for each nozzle.
that was also very satisfying to just watch this extrusion. But yeah, after I was done, I, I simply collected all the data, put that into a spreadsheet and uh, started doing some math on, on the spreadsheet and let, and let it do its job. And based on, on the results there, I, I simply sent all the results into a chart so we can analyze what I've discovered. Uh, and I'm going to share that to you, but I was also um, kind of in, impressed by the CHT nozzle, but also I found that um, even at low extrusion speed, I started to have under extrusion, even though the gear was not skipping, even though the filament was not skipping on the gear. Um, and, and I think CNC Kitchen, Stefan, uh, explains it uh, pretty good in his video as well. He's saying that uh, it, it might be... Um, understandable because the, the filament itself, the material, is getting deformated by the gears and it, there's some minor slippage that you can't see or can't hear um, and that will still cause under extrusion. So I really started to have under extrusion at the 10 millimeters cubic mark as you can see here um, and, and, and the more I was asking for speed the more it went up. So um, let's take a look at the graph right here. So you can see the requested flow that we send by G codes versus how under um, versus the, the the under extrusion, the measurement that was not going in the extruder on that 400 millimeter mark. So um, as you can see, the blue is the the brass nozzle, red is the CHT nozzle, and there's quite a big improvement. Uh, very very impressive. The, the brass nozzle, standard nozzle, started skipping at around 24 cubic millimeters per second. And, and the reason why we see more flow than with a 0 0.4 nozzle is simply because the nozzle is bigger. And uh, yeah, there's uh, a lot less back pressure that way. So you can get more flow with a bigger nozzle, which is expected. So um, it started skipping at 24. The CHT nozzle started skipping at 33, which is a huge increase in my opinion. But if we also look at um, where, I mean, we're probably not going to be usable all the way up to uh, where it starts skipping because it's under extruding too much, in my opinion, to make a, a reliable print. But we can analyze the graphic. And let me just uh, use the trend line. Same graph, but adding trend lines. And from here, we can see where um, I would stop using the... The, the, the brass nozzle, around 19 uh, millimeters, cubic millimeters per second, it really starts degrading. Compared to the CHT, where it could probably go all the way to um, 28, 27, 28, 29. And I'm going to show you another graphic that will see that. But thus, the trend line is to just show if I was going to uh, keep pushing what might have happened. But I didn't push all the way up to 33 flow. Uh, cubic millimeters per second on that standard nozzle because yeah I stopped where it started skipping. Now if we look at the last graph there um, this is the real flow versus requested flow and this is also interesting to see the green light uh, the green line sorry is the requested flow so what we ask in the g-code and red is CHT blue is the standard brass nozzle and um, this is a, a bit better, a bit um, easier to understand and see what's going on. So uh, again, at around 19 cubic millimeters per second, the standard brass nozzle starts to fall on his ass compared to the CHT where I would still say that it's capable of going all the way to 28, 29 cubic millimeters uh, per second before it starts degrading. So that's, that's a huge improvement. I mean, just replacing a tiny nozzle, that's... That, that's just awesome. So that, that was it, folks, based on my, my results that I got and the test that I've made, which is comparing in the same environment, same filament, same everything, uh, there is definitely an improvement in the flow. How much? I'm, I'm not going to quantify that. It's a bit hard to say, but yeah, definitely a improvement. So that's awesome. Good job, Bontek, on this one. Um, now it would be nice to have some uh, wear-resistant nozzle so we can print with abrasive uh, filament. And also, maybe, I don't know why I didn't get a 0 0.4. There's, there's no 0 0.4. Maybe it's machining. Maybe it's too hard to get 0 0.4.
with these uh, these machining process to have the splitter, but it would be nice to have a 0 0.4 and also have wear resistant nozzle. Um, now, the, the, the test that I've made is probably not the best test on, on the planet. <laughs> there are some factors that may interfere with result, but at least it was comparing apple to apple in the same exact same environment. So we can definitely say that there was an improvement. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was good information. And on this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. And on this folks, I wish you all a good night and see you on the next one. Goodbye.